Hey crafties, welcome to another video. I'm Infinity and I'm back again with another art video. Uh, yeah, so it's been a long minute since I've done a pour. I think it was, was it the 4th of July? <laughs> Way back on the 4th of July, so I'm back again. Monday is the first day of autumn and I am excited because I am a fall slash winter baby and I don't like the heat and it has been feeling like the devil's hot chocolate since I want to say late May so I'm amped for the winter slash fall season and so I've gathered up a bunch of colors that to me make me think of fall. Um, my white is going to be kind of a base coat here. You guys might peek out my cookie cutter here. This is going to be a cookie cutter pour. So fall is all about new beginnings and stuff and I'm like, well, let's recycle this canvas that I just decided to abandon midsummer. So without further ado, we're just going to go ahead and get pouring. Okay, so basically I'm doing a seven color pour. The white is a... Um, it's a base thing so my colors will run the way I want them to. I actually wrote out a list of colors that I use or am going to use. Um, I have gold, I have violet, I have red oxide, I have regular red, I have a primary yellow, orange, and my green is a combination of green, um, I'm sorry, phthalo green and two different types of brilliant yellow green. So I have like the liquid type of red and I have the Blick brand and the Blick brand is a little more yellow than it is green, um, yellow green, more yellow than green and then the Liquitex brand is more green than yellow so it made like a interesting like toothpaste color. We're gonna see how it turns out when it dries. So hmm, what color do I want to start with? I think I want to start with gold. Um, I mixed up more of this than anything else so might as well and I also have acrylic oil I also have acrylic oil in my paints. Some of them have acrylic oil in them, not all of them. Next, I'm going to pour this uh, red oxide. My red oxide always gives me the most trouble. Next, I think I need to pour a cool color in here, and it's going to be purple. And my last color. And so what makes these cookie cutter pours work is like, again, this whole base coat down here, which is taking up that pigment powder that's down there. And you just kind of lift this up and let it slowly run out. shift mine around just a wee bit between lifts because oh, I want to see those cells and they're already popping up on this side are gonna get some back canvas I'm sorry and I'm probably doing my pour just a little bit different than most people would do their pour but hey that's what makes me unique right 
So I'm just gonna drag this bad boy by, and while very, very little, like lifting it up very little. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Like, let me, let me zoom in. I just want y'all to see that. That right there. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do is just shift around stuff a little bit. And I might come back in. I'm definitely gonna have to come back in. And pour more color. So I take joy in using colors that don't seem like they would go together very well and using them just because I can. And these are the results of my experimentation. So what I'm gonna do now is, what color do I wanna pour or put down as a base? I also like kind of piecing together my pores. I've been experimenting with that a little bit lately and it's been working out pretty well. So what I mean by piecing them together is like I'll start off with like a certain base coat and then like spread it around as much as it will spread around without losing all my cells. Then I will do another part of the canvas and another part of the canvas until I get what I need accomplished. So this base that I'm doing now is purple. It's purple. So we're just going to move that around a little bit. And I'm going to start off with a yellow. So using the two extremes of the color spectrum, yay for color theory. Um, I'm coming back in with this gold. I feel like this gold is going to be like a staple color in this pore because it's so dominant over here. Okay, and then I'm going to come in with a cool color. Don't want to overdo the warm. That green looking beautiful. I'm gonna come in with this orange. And yellow. Okay. I did yellow. I'm gonna come in with red. leaking out a little bit from under the bottom but part of that is also residue from the white paint look at that kind of beautiful kind of beautiful so I'm gonna shift this around
think I'll do now is do a dirty like tree ring pour around these edges because I'm really liking the stuff that I have and I don't want to particularly mess it up. Uh, I will take some of my silicone spray and just like do that and let those cells develop while I mix up my second round of paint. Alright, let's zoom out a little bit. So I lowered the intensity on my camera so you guys can get the full effect of what's going on here. Um, the spray has started developing these extra cells and I was able to kind of fill up <laughs> this extra cup so that I could do my extra pouring. So I'm just gonna start doing that. I could have used this for another pour and I still might. But I always think these new developments are kind of fun. I could have worn gloves too, but I've been painting all day. Ew, paint. <laughs> okay, I really don't want to tilt this anymore, so I'm not gonna. Alright, so I'm fairly happy and I'm going to end the video here. I hope you guys enjoyed this pour. Um, I would look forward to seeing this pour on Instagram in the next couple days when the thing dries. Um, I'm also going to do another pour with the leftover paint off camera. And so, you know, again, if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe. I post videos, arts and crafts every week, twice a week, usually on the weekends. Um, check out my other social media for updates and things like that. And until next time, happy making.